In the previous video, I produced probability distributions as a way to understand continuous probability. A distribution was a function, and the possible measurements formed the independent variable, and the integral of the function over an interval was the probability of finding a measurement in that interval. Now I want to talk about means or averages. The probability distribution has all the information about the situation, so I should be able to calculate the mean from the distribution. But how do I do this? To explain the method, let me go back to discrete probability for a moment. In discrete probability, there are finitely many measurements mi, and each of them has a probability pi. The sum of the probabilities must be 1. If I consider all probabilities, something must happen. The probabilities are fractions of 1, so 1 means that something is certain in probability. How then do I calculate an average, or a mean? Well, I take each measurement mi, and I multiply it by its probability pi, and then I add all these up. This takes each measurement and weights it by how likely it is. And it covers all the cases, so the sum will be the average, will be the mean. In parallel, for continuous probability, instead of some measurements mi having a variable x, I have a variable x in a range from a to b. And instead of having a probability pi for each measurement mi, I have a function, a probability distribution f of x, which measures the probability of the measurement x. Instead of having all the probabilities add to 1, the equivalent condition for a probability distribution is that the integral over the domain must be 1, which says the same thing that the total probability is 1. Well then what about means? Well, to calculate the mean in discrete probability, I multiplied by the measurement in the sum. I do the same thing here. The variable x is the measurement, so the mean is the integral over the domain of the probability distribution multiplied by the measurement, multiplied by the variable. The Greek letter mu is the conventional one for mean, so I will use that, term, uh, that notation throughout this week. Let me go back to the examples I used in the first video and calculate their means. I started with the exponential distribution, a decaying exponential function which measures sets of data where low measurements are common and higher measurements become increasingly uncommon. Last video, I had a parameter alpha in the exponential distribution. Let me just set alpha equal to 1 for this example, so I get the distribution e to the negative x on the domain 0 to infinity. What is the mean of this distribution? I need to integrate the distribution multiplied by the measurement, x times e to the negative x. This is an integration by parts integral, and it works out to 1. And 1 is a reasonable average. The distribution is concentrated near 0 and decays quickly. Even though there can be very high measurements, they are very unlikely, and most of the measurements are quite low. So the average works out to exactly 1. I also introduced the uniform distribution in the previous video. What is the average of this distribution? Over a domain AB, the uniform distribution was the function 1 over B minus A. This was the value that ensured that the area under the distribution was exactly 1. To find the mean, I integrate the variable times the distribution. And this is a pretty simple power rule integral, and it works out to A plus B over 2. And this makes good sense. a plus b over 2 is exactly halfway between a and b. The distribution is uniform. It's the same everywhere. So the average is exactly at the middle. Lastly, I also had the Gaussian distribution, the bell curve. It had this shape. Measurements are likely to fall near a center point, and they decay on either side of the center point. This expression was the most general form of the Gaussian distribution. It had two parameters, mu and sigma. You may already have guessed that the mu parameter is going to be the mean, since I'm using the same symbol for it. But let me actually show you that mu is indeed the average. For the bell curve, the mean will be the center of the bell curve, the measurement that corresponds with the peak of the bell. So to do this, I multiply by the variable and integrate. That's how I calculate a mean. I'm going to pull the constant 1 over sigma times the root of 2 pi out of the integral. Then I use the substitution, dv and dx are the same for the substitution, and here is the integral after substitution. I split it up into two integrals by linearity, and I'll do the two integrals separately. The first integral is an odd function over all real numbers. 
Therefore, the positive and negative pieces will have the same area, but one will be above and one will be below the axis. They will cancel out, and by symmetry I can argue that this integral must be zero. The second integral needs another substitution, w equals v over sigma times root 2. After that substitution, the details of which I've not shown all of the steps, I get the integral of e to the negative w squared. As I said in the last video, this integral has the value of the square root of pi, and this square root of pi will cancel out, and all the other cons constants will have cancelled out by this point, so the result is in fact exactly the value mu. The parameter mu is indeed the average. And this is a nice property of the parameters of the Gaussian distribution. If I want a bell curve with a certain average, I can just set the value for mu in the expression for the distribution. I can construct a bell curve with any given mean very easily just by choosing the value of mu.